As a hand tool woodworker, there's a lot of times when I want really tight, accurate joints. So to do that, there's a whole bunch of tricks and things which I'll use, techniques, just to make it a little bit easier. Let me show you a couple. I'm gonna create a housing so that this piece of material will sink down in here, flush with the top. So this is one of those cases where you say, am I using a pencil or am I gonna scribe the line? No, I've gotta scribe the line for accuracy. If I put my piece of timber right up against that scribe line, I'll find the spot right here. Now that's far more accurate than a pencil can be. Keep my marking knife right there, slide this along so it meets it, and then draw that across. Now I've given it a nice line with some depth to it, so that's pretty good. That's defined the two sides where my piece of timber is going to go in. The next thing to do is define the depth down in here. So how, what's the thickness? I don't even have to give it a number. I can pick up my marking gauge and find that spot. What I'm looking for is where the point fits right onto that edge. About there somewhere I reckon. The thing to remember it's easy to take wood off, it's very hard to put it back on again. Just going to nip that up and I'm going to check again. For fine tuning I'll drop it this way to open up the gap. I'll go that way and you'll hear it go click with a little tiny sound if you need to, to do that fine tuning. So that is just hanging off there. So I'm pretty happy with that for my depth. Okay, so I've checked it, all is good. Now, so that's what I'm gonna be using to mark my depth down here. For the moment, I'm just gonna put a little mark there so I know how far down here I wanna run with it. I'm just going to basically look for that corner. Now sometimes, if this is going to be visible, like in a piece of furniture, I might initially come in with a pencil just to get in the ballpark, but then I'm going to come back in with my scribe line. Because you can rub out the pencil line, but you can't rub out a scribe line. So I can run my scribe line all the way from that line up to the other one. I want to keep it in that area, just there. Next thing I will do with it is put my tri square back on here, find that spot, and go from my scribe line back up the top so that those line up beautifully just here. Same deal over here, find where that mark is. Set it in there, so I'm going to mark that one through there. It's going to work nicely. So that's given me what I need. Last little corner there. Now the reason I've used a scribe line is twofold. In the bottom here, when I'm using my chisel, it's going to register perfectly into that little cut line. You'll actually feel the chisel drop into it. Pencil doesn't give you that level of accuracy. The reason I've done the scribe line down here is because as I cut down there with a saw, I have pre-cut the fibers. So that when the saw's cutting through here, it should mean we have greatly reduced the amount of fibers tearing back this side of the line. So that's why I've opted to mark the joint out using my scribe lines instead of using a pencil. But I've just used the pencil to help me initially. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm fishing for that spot down here. Come back in for my marking gauge, remembering to do it from the same direction as the other one. So we're measuring from the top side. Mark that down in here. So I'm going from line to line like that and then I'm going to mark that across this way. 
around this way is easy because I can register that blade right into the edge of the scribe line which is on the surface so you can feel it drop in, slide the tri-square up to it and then come down and finish down in there. I'll do the same over here. There it is, the blade has dropped into that little groove, slide it along, draw it down. It makes it so much more accurate. Okay, there it is. So the bit that's coming out is that. That's what's going to go. The next step is now that I've marked it out and I've got scribe lines all the way around to reduce the chances of fibres tearing out and to make the placement of the chisel easier, um, what I need to do is saw it. I'm going to saw it down here and I'm going to saw it down to there. So which saw? I want a fine saw. I want a cross cutting saw. So we've got a couple of choices here. Let's start out with the tenon saw. To get this started, I'm going to run it against my finger. That way I can control exactly where it starts. I'm going to start on the far side because that will be a lot easier. I'm going to gradually lower that across, blowing dust out of the way as I go, just so I can see, get it started, and away we go. Now when I'm sawing, I'm actually looking down the front here. I'm not looking on the back side. So that should be cutting down beautifully on the inside. You never cut on the line, you cut on the waist side of the line. Down we come. And I want to stop at the bottom. Now if you've got a cross housing joint where that bit disappears, that little bit of inaccuracy with the saw and its depth won't matter. But if it's visible in a piece of furniture, then what I make sure of is I'm going to sneak up on it. Okay, rightio, so I've cut one side, now I'm going to cut the other one. This time I'm working on that side of the line, get the old finger back where I want it to control where the cut starts, and away we go. Starting over there so it stays in the curve, you never try and cut the thing flat from the beginning, and gradually lower it across. So as usual, for accurate sawing, I need my head above the saw so my eyes are looking both sides at the same time. That will help to keep the saw vertical rather than trying to cut from over here. That ain't going to work. Down we go. Where I'm looking is down the front. We're following my line and that should be spot on on the other side. And I'm just going to sneak up on that line because I don't want to go past it. That's looking almost there. That'll do for me. Okay, so the next step is to chisel that out. Now, sometimes when you start chopping this out, depending on the grain, you might find, and the length of the housing this way that you're going to cut, you might find things happen in there that you don't want it to do. A safety mechanism is to just do another couple of cuts, not quite to the bottom. So you're reducing, reducing the bulk of the material that's there. So it's less likely to create a problem for you. So I've just broken up that chunk into several pieces, which is going to make life a lot easier. They don't have to go all the way down. I'm just going to get close. All right. So now it's time to use the chisel to take it out. The big mistake with this is to grab a chisel, stick it right in the bottom and go whack. So what can happen is pressure against the bevel can force it this way. And with softer woods that can push it into territory on this side of your scribe line where you didn't want it to be. So we're going to sneak up on it. I'm just working on my bench hook here because it's a great sacrificial surface to protect my bench. But I can also use the up stand to push against it when I need to. So doing this stuff on the bench hook is easier. When I want to pair, I can also do that so I can push against it. So it's kind of handy working with a bench hook. So I'm just going to grab my mallet here. Now I've gone for this really wide chisel. It doesn't quite fit my other pieces, but that's going to be okay. 
when I get to the bottom, I want my wire chisel. If you've got a lot of material to work and you've got smaller chunks, you might drop the size down. But let's see what happens with this. So I'm gonna just go halfway down the depth. Take a little bit out of there. Because it depends what's happening with the grain in the end here, where that's gonna come out. So you can see the material starting to move. I'm gonna flip it over to head it off from coming down into territory where I don't want it to be. So you can see it doesn't always go clean in the bottom. And that's why I've got to carefully work my way down. I'm gonna come down a little bit further. I want to make sure that I don't go all the way through because I might bust out material I don't want to lose. So you can see how these saw cuts in here they just help to control the material that's coming out because there's different things happening in each one of those. Righto, so I haven't hit my line yet. I'm just coming down close to it. By working back and forth, I'm just working with a bit more control. So as I work closer to this, I'm gonna end up just a mill or two away from my scribe line. Keeping the chisel vertical, notice that I've got the flat side of the chisel to the bottom of my housing. That's really important. So you notice I'm not cramping this down to the bench because I, I want to keep turning it over so I can just sneak up on it, especially with this chunky grain like the pine offers with the hard soft layers on angles. It just means I need to keep turning it more often than I might need to with a harder wood. So. If I need to push against something, I've got this over here, I can work with that. But that's why I'm not cramping it down really, because I need that flexibility to be able to keep rolling it over. Okay, so I'm just getting closer and closer. And I just, you can see we've only got about a mil and a half away, two mils at the most, from that line. I'm gonna come around to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing. This is gonna come away easily. So I can use the mallet, and just gently take that in, or I can move to more of a pairing technique. But as we've got closer down here, starting to flatten out, out into the base, it's time for me to drop my chisel right into here. Now, if I haven't been using my wide chisel, I will use now my widest chisel that will fit in between those housings. So this is about 42 mils in here. The widest one I've got here at the moment, these lovely Narex chisels, is 32. That's okay. That's much better than going for something and thinking I'm gonna do several smaller ones. I just get better accuracy for the wider that I go. So you can feel the chisel drop down into that scribe line. Right, so I'm just gonna sit that right there just give that a little small tap. I'm gonna move it along. So we go to the other end, sitting it down into there. That's good. Let's turn that around and I'm just gonna use a pairing technique just to clean the bottom of that. Lovely. There you go. little whisker there, I want to sit right in the bottom of that scroll line on that corner. It's great. Excellent. Now, that's right on the scribe line. I don't want to move it. So it might be helpful for me to just mark that with a pencil. If that pencil line goes, oh, I know I've got myself in strife. So now I'm going to come to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'll park that right here where I want it to be. So I'm going from one side on this, you can feel it drop down into the scribe line. Do a little tap, bring it up to the other end. Here we go. Beauty. Now, here's where the ups down the bench hook comes in handy. Because I'm working here on this side, it tends to push a piece of wood this way. So if I turn it around that direction, rotate my chisel, I can actually push that way with it to hold it where I want it so that it tends to not ride its way out. And again, I'm not going to go 
all the way through. I'm just going part of the way. Just past halfway is good. Turn that around. I'm going to come in from the other side. Just going to change to a pairing technique because that's going to give me nice control. Let's go horizontally this way. That's looking pretty good in there. So I can see I've got this little ridge in the middle, just there. I want to take that out without ramming the chisel all the way through. So pairing this way with control, I can put my hand here as a depth stop. So right, I'm going to make sure the chisel can't go past that point there. So it's just working with it, using the hand there as a depth stop. So here's a little trick which is kind of handy. This side over here is good. I like that one. I don't want to remove that bit of pencil line or that one. How do I know when I'm right in the bottom? I can do this. So I can just feel there's a bit of a hill in the middle. But there might be some stuff I don't notice. So let me just show you. A trick. Well, this is this is a style of woodworking tricks really. Using this part of my Try square, rub a heap of pencil onto that, lay it in here, and go back and forth. What it does, wherever the pencil is in between those lines, there it is. Just a really simple way of showing that what I want to see really to get this down nicely is just a bit of pencil line on the two outside edges where the scribe lines were and not a lot in between. So it's told me exactly where I need to do my pairing. I'll come in here and I'm going to remove that little bit of a hill there, that bit of a hill there, and there's a bit from the other side as well. So I'll turn it around and come from the other direction. I'll work in this way. So I'm just going to cut these fibers off down in the end here. To do that, I need to have the, the back, the flat of the chisel, hard up against here and go straight down. We're just going to sever those off. That's pretty easy to do. The trick is just getting it sitting right down into there. Okay, let's just test that again, hey? See if we're getting closer. All right, all right, that's not bad. So the bit in the middle's gone. We've got these little tiny bits here. So we're just gonna, again, do a tiny bit of pairing, just there to take that small hill out. So the pairing technique, again, I'm using this hand as my depth stop to make sure I don't go all the way through. Turn that around just to remove a tiny bit of that out of there. We're just doing some little micro adjustments to this really. Alright, let's see how we're travelling. Put my tri square back into here. Bad, eh? That's looking pretty good. Okay, I can live with that. So let's see what happens when we put our piece in. Remember, I want a nice snug fit. So let's see how we've gone here. Well, I'll tell you what, that's pretty snug. Now, depending on what I'm doing, if it's too snug, I could actually bend this piece of timber right here by the force going into it. So this is going to work okay, but I need to be mindful of that. If I was making up a frame that had several of these, you can build a curving to it by forcing this here so that you're bending the base. But this is going to work okay. So I just want to put that down into there. Now, what about that? Beautifully clean, lovely crisp joints, 
all the way around. Flush. Oh. Can't complain about that. And let's just see if we did the right thing here as well. Yeah, rough enough around right here in the bush, don't you reckon? <laughs> anyway, I hope that helped just to look at some tricks and techniques to be able to create a really crisp, clean housing joint uh, using these lovely Narex chisels and some other tools. Wonderful, hey?